Hello everybody and welcome to today's Tropical Update for July 16th, 2020. And before I get started, if you like the content that you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like the update for today, hit the like button. And if you want to keep up to date with the videos that I upload, um, hit the bell notification so you stay up to date with all my up the uploads. On to the update. Alright, and now we are on the National Hurricane Center page. And as you can see, the National Hurricane Center for the next 48 hours does not show anything happening here in the Eastern Atlantic. What about the five day? What did the five day tell us? Uh, the five day tells us the exact same thing: is uh, nothing is going to be popping up here in the Atlantic. Um, and I do have a feeling that this is going to change here in a few days, as we're going to look at some of the stuff going on here in the Eastern Atlantic, more specifically a wave that is coming off of here that may have long-term effects on Florida going forward. So <clears throat> with that being said, you know, this is going to be one of the rare occasions that we're going to look past seven days on the GFS and the European and see what uh, the system is going to do for maybe Florida in the Southeast United States. So now when, when I do that, we're going to take that with a grain of salt because it's a what if situation. Um, I'm not a wish forecaster or anything like that. I just should I see what I see with my own eyes. So uh, with that being said, let's move on to the uh, infrared satellite here. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of nothing going on here in the Atlantic right now. Um, we got a few swirly clouds, thin clouds going on here. Um, the wind shear, you, you can tell by the cloud, uh, cloud uh, movement that the wind shear is dying down in here. So that's going to add more fuel to the fire for tropical systems to come through here at any point in time. Um, we got this little convection coming off of uh, Louisiana. Not going to be much to worry about. This, this, however, is going to be something to worry about. This wave that is coming off of Africa right now. Um, as you can see, it's pretty robust in its formation here. Um, as we, as we go out through time, these systems are going to be more and more robust and they're going to become more and more frequent. Not that they're already not becoming more and more frequent, because as you see, small tropical wave, small tropical wave, small tropical wave, big tropical wave. I call this tropical wave Big Daddy. So, Big Daddy is going to be coming off of Africa and it might try to spin up something. may not be over here, but as it comes closer to over here, it might form a little something as uh, we go out into the 7 to 10 day time frame which on, as I said we're going to do it on a rare occasion is look at the 7 to 10 day forecast on both the GFS and the European so without further ado let's take a look at the GFS right now um, this this probably just came hot off the presses so we're getting the latest update here and as you can see here, here's our little system that's coming off of Louisiana nothing to worry about we got some uh, moisture here near Florida, the Northern Caribbean, and the Southwest Atlantic here. Um, you know that's all. That's all it is. Is disturbed weather. Um, nothing to really focus about because nothing's really consolidating here. Here's our intertropical convergence zone, and as you can see, it's, it's still trying to pull its way up north. So that's that's usually what happens here is this intertropical convergence zone starts a little farther south and then as the season goes on it works its way north where it's more favorable where we have the MDR you know set up right in here right so that's this is what the intertropical convergence zone is trying to do is get up to the main development region here um, these are these are tropical waves this is all tropical waves here and this is this is big daddy right here Big Daddy Tropical Wave. So let's go out through time. And as you can see, it starts to come off here. Um, as you can see, you know, nothing really is forming with it. 10, 10 millibars is probably the system right there. Um, and as you can see, you can see it move. You can see it move. Uh, nothing here. Oh, hey. This is about this is about ten days out. This is probably our system right here. Yeah, you know, it probably takes one of these turns right here. So this this is probably gonna be our G 
G name storm, I believe. Yeah. C V E F. Yeah, G. Yeah, G. Um, you know, going into the future here. So this is ten days out. I'm not gonna look any farther than this. Um, so it's just something to keep an interesting eye on as we go forward. And uh, here you go with more tropical waves coming off one after another here. So let's look at take a look at the European and let's see if I'm on the correct date here. And uh, I am. Let's see, this is the, the let's go back to the uh, the GF the the European. For the zero Z run, since this is not all the way updated yet. Okay, so here we are. You know, here's our big ridge of high pressure that's going to keep all the system south and moving west. Um, you can tell there's nothing really going on because you don't see vorticity popping up anywhere. Um, you got a few speckles of vorticity, but it's pretty weak. So these are pretty much tropical. What's weak tropical waves coming on right here? And uh, here's the Big Daddy right here. <laughs> I don't know why I keep on calling it Big Daddy. It's just it's just a big big wave, so that's why I call it that. Um, we're going to go forward here. This is 48 hours, and this, as you can see, the, the tropical wave it starts to emerge out into the Atlantic here. Um, you can tell by the way it looks that it has a lot of moisture to it. And we're going to go out. There's 70... 72 hours and it starts to grow just a little bit over the Cape Verde Islands here um, 92 hours it starts to stretch out a little bit and then it just totally dis dissipates and as you can see this is our wave right here this is the same wave right here pay attention to this and see where it goes here there it goes into uh, Puerto Rico and the islands surrounding the area <clears throat> there we go Cuba you know Haiti and what is that what is this? A closed, closed sun, uh, isotherm here. So, you know, this might be something to actually watch. It may not form into anything, you know, out here. But that's how it usually goes with these M MDR systems. Now, like, so, like say August, September, and October, you may get storms forming all the way out here. AKA Irma or uh, Harvey. Well, then Harvey dissipated in the Caribbean and then regenerated out here. But Harvey was definitely an MDR storm. Um, you know, just, you know, storms like that. Um, but uh, as you can see, like maybe July. But most of the MDR systems, you know, tend to wait until they get right about in here before they start doing anything. So this is what the European has to say. So we're gonna take a look at some different stuff here. Here is the wind shear values, and as you can see, the uh, wind shear is really dropping off here. Um, there's some reds and yellows around here in the south and southeastern Caribbean, but besides that, the Gulf, the Caribbean, the Southwest Atlantic, the Central Atlantic, and the Eastern Atlantic are all good to go. Green means go. So you know this. Plus the dying sear and air layer, you know, this is going to be a recipe for a few more storms to happen in July, maybe. Um, but definitely a lot more storms going into August, September, and October in the sorts. Um, so this is something we got to keep a close eye on is these wind shears because, you know, the less the wind shears, the more, uh, the less likely that the wind shear is going to blow the thunderstorm cloud tops away from the center of circulation. So that's going to be bad news going forward if this trend keeps continuing. Here are the water temperatures for the uh, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and the southwestern Atlantic. And as you can see, these water temperatures are fairly toasty here. Um, you know, as, you, as you guys know, the tropical systems like to thrive on 78 to 80 degree water, uh, water temperatures. And we definitely got plenty of that here in the Atlantic. Um... We may even have a few 90s popping up here too. 90s, these darker shades of 90s, 90s, 90s. You know, they're, they're starting to pop up everywhere now. And even going as far north as North Carolina and probably Virginia, you still got the, you got those 80 degree weather uh, temperatures here. So, you know, pretty much the whole Atlantic right now is prime 
for tropical development right now. We're just waiting on a few other key factors to happen here. And, you know, it's going to be off to the races. Um, we're, we're now up to F name storms, I believe. A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah. We're up to six name storms right now. Just in the month of July alone. Um, you know, two of those happening in uh, May, two happening in June, and two happening in July. You know, when is, when is the last time you had two, two, two? All together in the month in the span of two months um, normally you know June is really quiet usually July is very qu quiet um, you know it's just you know this this season is really gonna scare me here because all I see is bad things to come you know we're not even in the thick or the worst of this stuff yet um, you know, once we get into August, September, and October, you know, that's when you need to start worrying and paying attention to what is going on out here in the tropical Atlantic. Um, I'm not counting out the possibility of one or two more systems happening in July just because of the, how favorable the setup is right now. But, you know, going forward, we're going to have to really worry there. All right, speaking of favorabilities here, as you can see here, you can see reds just blanketing some of these areas here. These red colors uh, indicate highly favorable tropical intensity index here. So, you know, this is pretty favorable areas for tropical development to occur at this current time. There, as you can see, even going this far north and east, you have favorabilities going. Uh, with these reds and uh, oranges here. Um, and this, as, as I said, this is still mid-July, so this is probably going to grow out as we go out in time. So, you know, this might move out more north and east to pretty unprecedented lengths here. Um, I don't know how 2005 favorability looked going this far north and east, but, you know, this is still... This is scary, scary times right here. Highly favorable areas here. This is the upper ocean heat content. And as you can see, you know, we got upper ocean heat contents pretty much as far north as, you know, up here, you know, adjacent to Maine and Massachusetts and whatnot. So this, this upper ocean heat content is really, uh, really spreading out pretty good now. And as you can see, it's it's coming right in through here too. So the subtropics has some pretty good upper ocean heat content. Um, here is the main development region right in here. And as you can see, the upper ocean heat content is starting to build in here as uh, time goes by. Um, this will start to retrieve more north, and uh, it'll pull down, pull up the whole rest of this with it as we go forward in this time. Um, as you can see in the main development region, we're right near in the middle of the chart here for upper ocean heat content. So, you know, once we get to the hottest months of the year, so August and September, you know, this is really going to start warming up here to uh, pretty unprecedented levels here, just like it is here in the Caribbean. As you can see, this, these, <laughs> these numbers are off the charts. You can tell that they're off the charts because... You know, it only goes up to dark red, dark red, dark red. Um, they may, they may need to extend this a little bit, if you ask me, because this is there. There's probably more open, op, upper ocean heat content than is showing right now. You know, that's just that's just how I feel about it. And uh, you can see that the Gulf of Mexico has some pretty good upper ocean heat content too. So, pretty much, when a storm comes by here, and it starts digging up water it ain't gonna dig up colder water it's gonna dig up more and more hot water so it's not gonna run out of energy as we go forward through time and the storms track through these areas um yeah i mean it's just gonna as i said it's just gonna dig up more and more hot water and it's gonna fuel more storms to come through this area still 
because you know one storm isn't gonna you know change this this is this is too high up there it's gonna take like two maybe three storms to ch uh, change this you know going forward and speaking of favorability here we are going to be looking at the uh, upward motion and the downward motion of areas um, where you see this this orange area this is where the downward motion is is happening here um, downward motion pretty much means unfavorable conditions for tropical development because it's cool it's cool air that is being dropped down here and uh, in the green the green means go that's favorable that's upward motion uh, that is favorable for tropical development and as you can see the MDR at least is going to be in a favorable condition for let's see here July 25th until July 25th the MDR is going to be pretty favorable and then after that there's going to be a few days where it's not going to be favorable um, and then you got a whole swath of a month or uh, four three to four weeks of favorable conditions maybe even more than that because it, it, as you can see there's only s slight shades of reds and oranges here besides that it's pretty much white and green and so it's either going to be neutral or very favorable and uh, that's going to be bad news either either way if it's neutral or favorable you know tropical systems are going to form from that um, we're just going to have to see what happens going forward and uh, I'll keep you guys up to date with any more new information. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.